joining us. Welcome back to the Influencer's Journey Show. Our topic today is why every influencer must choose the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Why you must choose the hero's journey, because I know everyone here is an influencer in the making. It's a journey. It's in the process. And I am Suzanne Hart, and joining me is my girl, my buddy, my partner in crime, <laughs> Maria Hodge. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I want to start with why must every influencer go on the hero's journey? And it's such an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Why must each of us go on the, on, on the journey? And, and I will say, quite honestly, the journey's not fun. <laughs> not all the time. And, not and all the time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take that back. The journey is not fun and, ex and exhilarating at the same time. That's really what I want to say. The journey has, I know for myself, it is, the, it is the journey that has made me feel the most alive. And it's probably some of my most painful moments. Mm -hmm. I know. And people are like, well, why do I want to do that? <laughs> because <laughs> that is the thing. So um, let me tee up a little bit about what the journey looks like so people actually know what we're talking about, Sharia. So the hero's journey is really those moments in your life where you are in your darkest moments. It's those moments in your life where you are pursuing something possibly larger than you, desiring something larger than you, have a vision worthy of your life, a goal for you, your business, and you hit every bump in the road possible. And, and in those moments, we get to choose whether we sit in victim or hero. And it's really that simple. Yeah. And, and, so, and, and, and even in our lives, in our relationships, do you sit in the victim or do you sit in the mm -hmm. hero seat? In your, with yourself and even around your own personal journey, around body image, around health, around all these things. Do you sit in the victim or do you sit in the hero? And it's that decision that we're talking about and the journey from victim to hero is the hero's journey. You know, if you look at the book, The Hero's Journey, they say it's the journey of life. Yeah. Interesting, eh? Yeah, I, you know, I was just about to say that because here, here's the thing for me. There's always these periods in life where there's some sort of dissatisfaction. So you could be going along, life, everything is all hunky-dory, and then something, something comes up, something happens, there's an event, and then you become dissatisfied. And the question really becomes, like, what are you you know, going to do with that. So are you going to sit and sulk and, like you said, be in the blaming? Or are you going to really make the decision to go after something different? And it's in that decision making of wanting something different, that's when the journey, you know, to me begins. Yeah. And remember we said it's, it's about 100% responsibility. Mm. And and I think what makes the, G, the, the journey so important and what has us become a person of influence is I believe a person of influence is someone who is willing to chart a new path, one. Yes. And two, it is someone who is willing to take 100% responsibility for writing their own story, for charting their path. Mm -hmm. So. What's interesting about this is the first thing when you begin the journey is when life comes down your street and it doesn't look the way you want it, how many of you have a desire to fight with it? Like to resist it, fight, deny it. And, and that's, that's, the, that's the example of, oh, you're a victim now. Be upset yeah. with it. So if, if you are, put a fight in the comment section uh, just to let us know. So I know for myself, my first um, reaction is to fight. Some mm. of you might to, to have flight, take off, avoid, 
percent present. Some of you might freeze, put your head in the sand, go to bed, never come out. Whatever it is, <laughs> what's your first response? And that's our human response. That's our reaction. That's those things. However, acceptance says we don't play that game. Yeah. And and so acceptance, the first thing is is to actually I call it look at the data, look at the what so, mm -hmm. and remove the pity party story. Yeah. Okay. I'll be transparent. I loved my pity party story when I started this. <laughs> it was the Academy Award of Drama. Um, yeah, I know. Privately, Academy Award of Drama. <laughs> drama, trauma, tears, upset. Oh, yeah. Did, mastered it. Mastered it. And, uh, and to give that up was hard for me. And why I, why I understood it was hard, Taria? Because what's left? Yeah, the work. <laughs> what's left is accepting. Mm -hmm. So I had to give up the story and just look at the, 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 what was actually happening. So when I say give up the story, give up the story of who I'm gonna blame Mm -hmm. who I'm going to shame, me. Um, give up the story of who I'm going to judge. Did you give up a story of finger pointing? Give up all the stories of avoidance. Give up all the stories that give me reasons. Give up all the stories that justify. Give up all the story. I have to give up all those stories. Mm -hmm. That's a scary thing because all you're left is with truth. And truth is just yeah. a fact of matter. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think that that was one of my biggest um, learns too in really unpacking it after is to take a look at the data because the, they they have the saying misery loves company, but they never really tell you the other side <laughs> of that. They just stop with the misery loves company. But, you know, after and, and I think, like you said, all of those emotions that you just listed, they're natural. And mm -hmm. so it's to pay attention, like when they're coming up, like when do you feel them? And then, OK, you feel it for me. It's a good cry. That's mm -hmm. what I do. I have to, you know, cry, roll around, pout, sulk, do all of that stuff. And then after I'm done, I'm dehydrated, <laughs> then I go. Tired. <laughs> right, tired. I just wore myself out with a good cry. Now it's time for me to, like you said, look at the data. Like, what are the facts here? And when I take a look at the facts, okay. Now we're left with what's the work we got to do? So what's the next step and how do you get moving? You know, the, the visual I have as, as both of I were talking was an adult temper tantrum. Do you mm -hmm. remember when you, your child wanted something and they didn't get it and they went into the temper tantrum, they rolled around, they cried, they boo-hooed, they stamped their feet, they sulked in the corner, all that stuff. Um, that's really what we're talking about. As adults, we do it in a more sexy way. We have a better command of the language, but we're really having a, a childish temper tantrum. Yeah. And so, because we do, because we don't want to accept what's in front of us, yeah. and 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 as children, we don't want to accept what's in front of us. Now, I, I want to define something because whenever I tell people accept, people think acceptance is giving up, giving up on what you want. Acceptance is is is, you know, so giving in to the situation. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is looking at the truth of the matter and accepting it, simple. Looking at the truth of the matter and just saying, okay, this is what it is. Then the question becomes, now what? Yeah. And oftentimes when that happens, I know for me, I usually have aha moments. I usually have insights. I usually have, oh my gosh, how did I miss that? How did, like, so for me, when I stopped having my temper tantrum, and I started thinking, I realized that I was in every situation that I was upset yes. at. And so that little aha for me actually said, so if I was in every situation co-creating yeah. what I didn't want, mm -hmm. I could actually create what I wanted. Yes. That was my aha moment. And so what it allowed me to do is to step outside of my victim and say, 
well, what can I do? What do I want truly? Where can I get help? And I started asking different questions. And in that moment, I started my hero's journey. Mm -hmm. I went from victim into this journey of becoming the hero in my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and my aha was similar. Like I said, when my friend pointed out to me and she, she, she simply said, well, you allow these things to happen. So by not doing anything, I was also a willing participant, victim. Willing participant, I love it. Uh, yeah, a willing participant because I sat there and did nothing, didn't say anything, went along with it. Oh, victim, 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 poor me, poor me, don't know what to do. And then she's just like, no, uh-uh. There were things that you could have done. Okay, so let's now just take a look at that. So it's it's really, really good stuff. And one of the things that that is standing out for me the, the, the really cool thing, and we're bringing this back to being influencers. So this is one of the, the reasons why I love the idea of social media being your storyboard, because it's one thing to go through these experiences in, in private. Mm -hmm. But I think the real benefit is for as we are going through and we're coming out on the other side is to keep in mind all of the, the people who, you know, can benefit, you know, those that we are called to serve. Because oftentimes people are struggling. They are going through the, the things that we're going through. Like you said, misery loves company. But what they didn't finish the sentence saying is that, okay, like there is a guide, there is a way out. So you just don't sit and commiserate in the misery. How can you move from the stage that you are to where you want to be? And then who's the person or who are the people who are going to help you do that? So you're bringing us into the next question is what makes the story of the hero's journey so mm -hmm. important? And I want to open it up by saying when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? And, and, and it takes a moment for us to be ready. And, and sometimes, I know for myself, sometimes I have to hit the same wall 10 times. Mm -hmm. I have to fall in the same hole 10 times. I have to bang into the same situation a few times before I'm ready to change. I'm ready to shift my behavior. Invariably, whenever the student is ready, somebody appears, something appears, a book appears, the guide appears, right? So when a student is ready, the teacher appears. So the teacher appears. And, and what's really neat about, you know, the story of the hero's journey is the reason we see the teacher often is because the teacher is the person who's been in a similar situation and we get to learn from their wisdom. Yes. And but this is the piece. Oftentimes the teacher is willing to share their journey and how they got their wisdom. Mm -hmm. And and as students, as a student who's ready, we're like, that's what I am looking for. That mm -hmm. right there. And so the why the story of the hero's journey is so important and why Trio is talking about it, it's so key to share these stories on social media is your people. Yeah. that are look stuck in the places and spaces that are hurtful, they are looking for you as you go through your journey yeah. to say, I have been there. Right. I understand that and I can guide you. Mm -hmm. That is what is the what, one reason why it's so important. I think the other part is, and I'm gonna throw this to you, Tarita, to just unpack a little bit. You know, when we love heroes, mm -hmm. right? Heroes inspire us. You notice we've been told fairy tales from a young, young age, yes. Old superhero stories from young, young. We love movies where someone is amazing and rises and gets through something. We love those stories. Why is that? It inspires us. I, I think it, it inspires us because of possibility. Mm. 
right? So we always want to be able to hold on to hope or hold on to possibility. So sometimes when we are going through those dark and challenging times, it's hard for us to see what the end would be. Like if we right. knew how to come out of it, then we won't be rolling around and crying and throwing these extensive, elaborate pity parties and inviting everyone. We were just like, oh, that's how you come out of it. But sometimes we can't see it, mm -hmm. how, how to get out. And so I know for me, as I go through, you know, my challenges and my journeys, the when I'm ready to come out and I'm going to come back to that, when I'm ready to come out of it, it's almost like I'm automatically able to see who I want to connect with. And I'm just like, oh, that person has been through this before. Mm -hmm. Okay, the guide right there. And so the question is always, what do I need to do? What's the next thing that needs to happen? And it's kind of, you know, aligning yourself or doing what you have to do, whether you become a client or that person is your mentor. Like you said, you read a book, something that's going to move you from where, where you are to where you want to be. So we, I, I love it when I see those stories you know, in people. And it, and it's not just sometimes we think like the big name influencers, but it could be people who are in our everyday lives too, that says, Hey, you know, I've been through some stuff. This is how I got out, got out of it. Now I could share with you what you need to do or what the steps are that you need to take. And the thing that I wanted to come back to one of the things that I realized that I found was so interesting. I started to ask myself, was this information always here? Was this person always here? Was the guide always here? And I didn't see the guide because they say the guide appears when the student is ready or is the guide always there? But because the student wasn't ready, the student didn't recognize that that was the guide. So that's the parable for today. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love it. One of the things, um, you know, that R Regina is saying is holding on to feelings is comfort comforting in the oddest way. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, and it is, it is. And, and, you know, I remember when I held on to my feelings um, and I didn't share them, there was two reasons. One is to give them up meant it required movement and it was easier to just stay in my feelings and stay where I was mm -hmm. so because I was afraid of where the movement was. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was afraid. Yeah. The other thing, holding on to my feelings and keeping them really private allowed me to maintain the facade that all was well, mm -hmm. because many of us, and you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you totally understand that we walk around with the facade that everything's perfect. I got it together and nothing's happening. And we don't want people to see those moments behind the iron curtain that says, oh my gosh, something's crumbling right now. And the big learn about sharing my feelings was actually putting down the facade and putting down the mask and, and talking through the journey publicly. Mm -hmm. And for me, what happened, two things happened. One was it became so liberating and less stressful. And secondly, it became why people started working and following me was they were like, oh my gosh, I get that. Oh, you went through that too. So it was that thing. So the more I put me into the marketplace and I put my truths out there and I stopped hiding, the freer I became and the less stress and pressure I had. Mm -hmm. You said something also really key. So thank you, Regina, for that, for that comment. Um, you said something really key. You said, Eve, you know, it, you know, it's not the big influencers that we follow that we're talking about. It's the small ones. But I want everybody to get that. It's a, in the, it would, remember, it's the influencer's journey. Mm -hmm. And we're on different stages of the journey. So if you look at when Tony Robbins, for example, first came out, nobody knew who he was. Right. And he was figuring things out. He was financially upside down you know, living, you know, in uh, like homeless and all these things. And, and it was when he decided to take responsibility for transforming his own life yeah. that he began to gain influence because 
people are inspired by people who take themselves on. That's really what it is, who they take themselves and they take their life on. And the, and the more he did it, and the more he grew, the bigger his life became. And the more he grew, the bigger his life became. And the more he grew, the bigger his life became. And now we look at him and, and he seems everywhere and massive. However, it's the journey that got him there. He didn't start there. Right. And so I think for each of us, why we're unpacking this thing called the influencer's journey is so, so to remind every super achiever listening that it is a journey of growth and expansion. It's a journey of you stepping into the knowing. It's a journey of you stepping in and finding the brilliance inside of you. And, and, and I want to remind each of us that none of us knows how magnificent we are. We have no idea how brilliant we are. We have no clue our capacity. And the journey allows us to go on the journey of discovery. And the more we discover and the more we're willing to take on, it equals usually the more influence we have when we use that influence to serve others. It's powerful stuff. Yeah, and, and I'm going to go back to something that you said. And this is one of the, the reasons why I love working with you. And I consider you know myself in such a fortunate position. So you mentioned the word shame. And I noticed when you said shame, you went me. Mm -hmm. And so that's a concept that I didn't really understand or knew or had an awareness around until we started to do our work together. And I was just like, oh my gosh, how many areas have I locked myself into shame, thinking mm. that I'm the only one who's going through this or that there's an event and it's all my fault and wh whatever it is, you know, whatever story you're telling yourself that, that allows that feeling of shame to set in. And as we started to do our work, I, I paid attention to a saying that I've heard all the time, but never really unpacked it. And you know what people say? Tell the truth, shame the devil. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this sounds really cute, but what? <laughs> it's powerful. Right? But what exactly does it mean? And so one of the things that I had to learn is, you know what? when you get to the point to share those experiences it's almost of a freeing of yourself so you're mm -hmm. not you're not holding that burden you know on on your on your own or you're not, not letting that burden keep you down that's what i'm trying to say yeah. and then what you find is that there are other people who are on different parts of the journey. So some people will say, girl, why are you beating yourself up about that? I've been through that. That happened to me. Let me help you here. And then there's always the people that you are a few steps uh, ahead of that they're looking you know, for that person to say, oh my gosh, now you're going through it. You're at this stage. How can I learn from what you're going through to help me get further? So I started to see it as this beautiful chain reaction mm -hmm. where we're all in a, a, a beautiful cycle of growth as, as you will. And like I said, it was something that I never really paid attention to, something that I never understood. And you used the example of Tony Robbins. I remember when I first started marketing, I heard everyone talking about these stories and where they started from nothing and didn't have this. And, and I was just like, it, it is every entrepreneur going through like, you know, you know, and I, and I didn't get it. Now I get it. It's and, about. And, and, the and, and yes, every entrepreneur is going through mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, every leader is going through. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the piece around it is, yeah. is, is, you know, I want to just look at leadership for a moment, which is our, our last question. You know, why is the hero's journey essential for leadership? Mm -hmm. And and when we look at leadership in its, in its true sense, 
not about what we do to others, but leadership is about who I become for myself and how I impact or affect others is really the, the piece. And, and the reason all leaders seem to be going through it is when you're up to big things, right. you have big breakdowns. Mm-hmm. When you're up to massive things, you become quite vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, there's a lot to talk about because when, every time I choose to expand my comfort zone, mm-hmm. I failure is in, inevitable as I, as I figure it out. Um, massive things are, could happen, breakdowns are inevitable as I figure it out. So yes, influencers always seem to be going through it. They have stories of overcoming because that's the journey of growth. Yeah. The growth can't happen without conflict. Growth can't happen right. without change. Growth can't happen with those moments where we sit in uncertainty. Mm-hmm. And so yes, we're always going through it. This is the piece, however, is that it is when we go through it and we come through the other side that we become a source that inspires those who want the same thing. And if you think of any influencer you love, there's something about them that inspires you because you want something similar. And they are now like the beacon of light. They show you what's possible. And you're like, wow, I want that. I want to be able to do that. They gave me hope. And so that's why this journey is so important. However, it's not a journey where misery loves company. Those people are the ones that are going to keep you small. Mm -hmm. It's a journey of those people who are publicly stretching, publicly growing, failing, getting back up, scratching their way to the top, figuring it out. And you want to say, I don't know where they're going. Right. but I'm in that team over there. Mm-hmm. And and those people have little tolerance for misery, loves yeah. company. Those people are like, okay, let's figure, like it's like what your friend said, enough already. Are you done? Yeah. yeah. You had your moment, let's figure this out. It's a different way of looking at life. Heroes always inspire. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's so beautiful to look at it and unpack it this way because we all have the ability to control our destiny or write our story or create a vision because that's what all of these things are. You know, when you sit and you say, well, I want to have, you know, a juicy life. I want to create a vision so juicy. Well, that's the leadership part. Now that you have crafted that in your mind, like what are the things that are necessary to get you to that place. And there, yeah, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be bumps, bruises, not so <laughs> looking good moments, but it's all how we go through them. And I love, like I said, one of the things in working with you is always a definition of leadership. And true leadership isn't something that's affected on others. True leadership is how we lead ourselves through the world. So in those moments, how are we choosing to show up? What are we choosing to do? And how do we do that publicly to inspire others on the journey? You know, I was listening to Wayne Dyer yesterday, and I think mm-hmm. the book I was listening to was Real Magic. Uh-huh. And one of the things he said is that he said, you know, when, when you are in this place where you're ready to create real magic, mm-hmm. it's that you have an understanding that it's not um, the things, you, the goals that you achieve, it's not the things that you acquire where magic happens. Magic happens in who we are willing to become, yes. right? Magic happens in the experiences that take our breath away, the experiences where we come through something and become more. Magic happens in those moments where we're serving and touching and inspiring other people. And it's all about who am I willing to be for this person? How am I willing to serve in this moment? And that's really the journey that we're talking about allows you to be always asking your, the question, who am I truly required to become? Yeah, love it. Okay. Yeah.